Hey, and welcome to my channel about living in and moving to Denver, Colorado. In my last video, we covered seven different neighborhoods that you wouldn't necessarily know about unless you're already a local or already live in the Denver, Colorado area. But since there are so many neighborhoods to cover, we're gonna be covering seven more neighborhoods in this video. Let's get into it. Katie Martineau, also known as The Real Estate Gal. And if you're interested in learning all things about Denver, Colorado, this is the channel for you. So I would love for you to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you get notified every single time I release a video, which is twice a week. And also, if you need help with buying, selling, or anything in between, I'm your gal and would love to help you. So please see my contact information below. But in the meantime, let's get to know Denver and the surrounding neighborhoods. first neighborhood that we're going to be covering is at Cherry Creek and Cherry Creek North. This is just east of Denver and it's one of my favorite places due to accessibility and the variety of shopping and restaurants that are around. Cherry Creek is the definition of luxury. You're going to be seeing a lot smaller lot sizes, posh homes, empty nesters, upscale new townhomes, mansion-like remodeled bungalows, and the median sales price is going to be around a million, if not more. This is definitely a walkable neighborhood with all the fancy art galleries, the boutique shopping. The Cherry Creek Mall is near the center and has pretty much any designer that you can think of. Kitty Corner from the mall is one of my favorite sushi restaurants called Matsuhisa. It's an upscale sushi restaurant that doesn't just have the rolls. It has really nice sashimi, hot plates, a fantastic cocktail list. The Gardener with tequila is one of my absolute go-tos when I'm there. We even make it in batch at home and is a really great place to splurge a little bit and have a celebration. The Cherry Creek Arts Festival is one of the fun things to do where they close down a couple blocks of the street and have local galleries come out to display their artwork as well as vendors and food trucks. But I'll warn you, it's probably unlike an art festival that you've been to before. I was at one of the booths and I asked the lady about a specific piece of jewelry and she's like, yeah, that's 1800. So I'm thinking, what does that mean in terms of silver or gold? Because I believe silver is 925. And I was like, I asked her, what do you mean? And she said, oh, that's $1,800. I was like, oh, I haven't been to an art festival on the street with super nice stuff like that before. There's there's also a local farmer's market that takes up part of the parking lot of the Cherry Creek Mall. And there was a Bed Bath & Beyond that is no longer part of that complex and they're working on a new development with green space, office space, and more shopping for that 12 and a half acre lot. second neighborhood we're going to be talking about is Sloan Lake, also known as Sloan's Lake. I actually have never heard anyone naturally say Sloan Lake. It just rolls off the tongue a little bit better. But what it was, was a huge plot of land that a gentleman purchased. And when he was digging for water, he actually hit an aquifer that turned into now Sloan's Lake. It's one of the largest natural bodies of water in the Denver Metro. And it also has the second largest park in the Denver Metro as well. You're always going to see people rollerblading, walking, biking around the lake because it has an absolutely perfect view of the Denver skyline to one side and then the mountains to the other. The sunsets there are absolutely beautiful. You can't have any motorized boats, but you can have paddle boards, kayaks, canoes, and you also see a lot of people doing yoga meetups or just walking their dog to get some exercise. The average price point in Sloan's Lake is gonna be $817,000 from a report in 2021. And for obvious reasons, the closer you get to the lake, the higher the price points for those homes. The Sloan's Lake area is right next to Edgewater and Edgewater has a really great array of a King Supers grocery store. There is a Target. Crumble Cookies is one of my absolute favorites. If you haven't heard of them, they're about four inches in diameter. They change their flavors weekly and it's super fun to get a four pack, so four different flavors of cookies. It's a really easy gift to get somebody. And then there's also the Edgewater Public Market that has a huge array of different styles of restaurants, including empanadas, a local barbecue spot, cocktails. There's a brewery inside and they are always hosting free events as well as free outdoor movies during the summer. Sloan's Lake is west of I-25 as well as downtown Denver, so you're already on your way to the mountains if you decide to reside there. Or if you just wanna walk around the public lake, it's a really popular destination in the summer. Third neighborhood is Sunnyside. 
Sunnyside is just south of I-70 and just west of I-25. So it's right across the highway from Rhino, which is a neighborhood that we covered in another video. I have to tell you, Sunnyside is booming. It is primarily residential, and you're gonna see a lot of tutors, bungalows, and super modern row homes and duplexes. This is one of the areas I actually dog sit quite often, and it's really cool to be walking next to some of the houses and see the different styles that are completely right next door to each other. The proximity to downtown Denver is stellar and there's a few streets of bars and restaurants that I do want to highlight some of my favorites bacon social house is a really great brunch spot one of the things on their menu is six strips of bacon each one has a different flavor such as maple bacon candy Nashville chicken hot black pepper and the cool thing that stood out to me was that you get scissors with the six strips of bacon so you can share for the table another mentionable is so damn Gouda which is a local cheese shop there's Chubby's which is a burrito place that has a amazingly spicy green chili that can be added to any of their tacos, burritos, quesadillas, and that place is open till 3 a.m. just in case you're out bar hopping. That's a great place to have a bite to eat before you head home. There's also community vibes near Chafee Park or Chaffee Park, however you say it. I think it's Chaffee Park. I've asked so many locals and it's 50-50 on how you pronounce that park. But they'll have yoga in the park, jazz in the park, and there's a cute little farmer's market that grows its own vegetables and flowers that's open on the weekends in the summer. Sunnyside and Sunnyside Berkeley have definitely gained popularity in the last couple of years, and so your average price point you're looking at is gonna be about $895,000. neighborhood number four is going to be Park Hill. We're going to be going east of I-25. Park Hill borders City Park and it's going to have a lot of tree-lined streets with single-family homes and garden apartments. Park Hill is one of Denver's oldest neighborhoods and it's really close proximity to, as I mentioned, City Park. There's a lot of family-oriented things to do there. You can go to the Denver Zoo, the Denver Nature and Science Museum. There is a huge golf course that currently has a conservation easement to it. And in Park Hill, there's also an affordable housing project with 253 units in Northeast Park Hill that's currently being developed. You're going to be seeing a lot of charming residential properties defined by pre-1960 ranches on average size lots for an average price point about $580,000. Moving on to number five, which is Congress Park. So that's going to be south of City Park and just east of Cheeseman Park, kind of tucked away. It does have a couple busy streets. Two of them are one ways going opposite directions. And those streets are the best way to get from east of Denver to west of Denver. So just know that there's going to be a little bit more traffic because of those roads. The Congress Park public pool just went under a $10 million renovation. It is a public pool that anyone can go to as well as tennis courts, pickleball courts. There's easy access to the Denver Botanic Gardens. And in Congress Park, there's a film center that is the home of the nonprofit Denver Film Society and hub for the notable Denver Film Festival that's held every November. Congress Park is really close to Rose Medical Center that has some really great restaurants right next door. Culinary Dropout is definitely notable if you are getting together after work. They have a really great socialization atmosphere as well as people Pizzeria Locale and Blanco Cochina. The average price point for Congress Park is gonna be around $800,000 for a home. The sixth neighborhood, which is one of the fastest growing neighborhoods in the Denver metro area, as well as it was rated one of the top places to live, is Green Valley Ranch. If you go to the airport often, Green Valley Ranch is gonna be a really great option to look at. There are a ton of builders that are building there. DR Horton, Meritage Homes, Oakwood Homes, to name a few, and the proximity of the airport is perfect. Or if you work downtown, there is a light rail that goes through Green Valley Ranch all the way down to Union station. Then you can completely avoid traffic. They are currently working on the roads, expanding the highway and making it more efficient. But the light rail is a really great way to avoid the headache of traffic and delays while that construction is underway. Suburbia Light Vibes is a really great way to describe Green Valley Ranch. There are safe streets, 
21 schools within its boundaries, skate parks, a public golf course, and the average home price here is about $525,000. Green Valley Ranch shouldn't be confused with Highlands Ranch, which is south, or Greenwood Village, which is also south. If you can combine some of those names, it can get a little bit confusing, but Green Valley Ranch is east of Park Hill, really, really close to the Denver International Airport. Last but not least, on to neighborhood number seven, we are gonna be talking about Hilltop. Hilltop has a classic Denver architecture and impressive new construction. It's gonna cost you a quote unquote, cool $1.6 million average price point for a home. And it's close enough to Cherry Creek and Cherry Creek Mall to satisfy all of your shopping needs, including a Whole Foods grocery store, dining at places like Quality Italian for dinner, grab a cup of coffee at Aviano Coffee Shop, or if you need a nice business lunch, Hillstone Restaurant has a really great variety of menu options. Some of the local little spots in Hilltop that you wouldn't necessarily know about, unless you're a local, would be La Conda Del Borgo's Italian, and the owner of Laconda is actually from Italy. He studied in Italy, so he knows his pasta. You also have High Point Creamery for ice cream. And to work off all the calories, you can stop at Fierce 45 in Hilltop and do some Pilates. Also, Denver loves their parks, and so there's also gonna be Cranmer Park, which used to be one of the highest points in Denver, and is the star of the neighborhood thanks to its large open meadow, mountain views, and six-foot sundial right in the center. During the summer, you're gonna see volleyball courts because that is part of the Volleyball the Rockies space that they set up on Wednesdays and Thursdays to play volleyball. have it, seven more neighborhoods around Denver. If you wanna learn more about the neighborhoods around Denver Metro or anything regarding the front range, you gotta hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you get notified every time I release a video. And as mentioned, I am a licensed real estate agent in this state, so if you need help with buying, selling, or anything in between, please reach out with my contact information and let me know how I can help you. Bye,